Good evening. God bless you, Isaiah. Pray that you had a wonderful day. Blessings to you, man of God. Blessings, blessings. Pray that you had a wonderful day. Thank you for inviting your followers. Good evening, everyone. Pray that you all had a wonderful day of rest, productivity. God bless you, Aisha. Pray that you had a wonderful day. God bless you, Lenore. God bless you, Shamia. God bless you, Ruth. God bless you, Rosa. Blessings to each one of you. Pray that you had a wonderful day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. God bless you, Glory. Pray that you had a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. When you're ready, say ready, and we'll get ready to get started. When you're ready, say ready. I came on a little bit, uh, so we'll give the people a little time to come on. Good. I see that, Isaiah. When you're ready, say ready. Good. I see that, Glory. I see that, Aisha. Thank you, Lenore, Shamia. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. We pray that you had a wonderful day. I have had a productive day, been on the move, uh, wanted to come on tonight. Uh, write this down, please. Your welfare and your well-being is impacted by who you are and where you are. Your welfare and your well-being is impacted by who you are and where you are. Write that down, please. You need to know that, Isaiah, the author, Shamia. Good glory. That's right. That's a bomb. Your welfare in your well-being is impacted by who you are and where you are. Okay. Your welfare in your well-being is impacted, Aisha, by who you are and where you are. Shekinah, your welfare in your well-being is impacted by who you are and where you are. Thank you, Isaiah. Perfect. 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 Now, God has put everything in you. Watch this. God has put everything in you to be and to do what he has called you to be and do. God has placed inside of you, Lenore, everything you need to be and to do what he has called you to be and do. 
okay? Your welfare and your well-being is impacted by who you are and where you are. And God has put everything in you to be and to do what God has called you to be and do. Good evening, Cheryl. Blessings to you. Good evening, Tasha. Blessings to you. The Lord bless and keep you both. Blessings. Good to have you on tonight. Pray that you had a wonderful day. All right. Your welfare and your well-being is impacted by who you are and where you are. Let's go to Genesis chapter number one. Genesis chapter number one. Let's go there. Your welfare and your well-being is impacted by who you are and where you are. God bless you, Larry. Bless you, man of God. Good to have you on tonight. The Lord bless and keep you. Blessings to you and Nisi. Blessings. Good. How many of you were blessed today by our lesson on leadership? We had a real good lesson the last two days on leadership. I have a whole bunch. I have a whole lot more. But uh, I, I may talk about it a little tonight. I may. I was going to go into it. But I want to leave something with you. Genesis chapter 1. Blessings. Thank you. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Your welfare and your well-being is impacted by who you are and where you are. Genesis 1 and 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over every fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Genesis 1.26, that's one of my... Uh, favorite verses that gives you... The mandate. The mandate is dominion. All right, write this down, please. Write this down. Five slash one. Five slash one. Five plus one is six. He rested on the seventh day. Write that down, please. Five plus one is six. And he rested on the seventh day. Thank you, Isaiah. Five plus one is six. He rested on the seventh day. Okay. Your welfare and your well-being is impacted by who you are and where you are. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Your welfare and well-being is impacted by who you are and where you are. Why did I give you those numbers? Write this down. God spends five days creating the place. Write that down. God spends five days creating the place. God spends five days creating the place. God spends one day creating the man. 
So Larry, Isaiah, Cheryl, Lenore, God spends five days creating the place, glory, and one day creating the man. Five plus one is six. And then on the seventh day, he rests. On the seventh day, he rested. Five days, he creates the place. On day number six, he creates the man. And on the seventh day, he rested. He did not rest because he was tired. He rested because he was finished. Write that down. Lord have mercy. He did not rest, Larry, because he was tired. He rested because he was finished. Okay. I want you to see that. You got that? Your welfare, glory, in your well-being is impacted by who you are and where you are. I keep repeating that because I want you to see. Your well-being and your welfare is impacted, Lenore, Cheryl, by who you are and where you are. And yet God spends five days on the place but only one day creating the man. God knows what environment to drop you in to cause you to flourish. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. There you go. Good, Lenore. Watch this, Lenore. God takes five days to create the place, the environment, and he spends one day creating the man. Therefore, God knows what environment to drop you in to cause you to flourish. Come on, somebody say, Lord, put me in my place. Good, glory. Come on, somebody say, Lord, put me in my place. Cheryl, God created man one day, created the place five days. Good, five days creating the environment. Good. He knows what environment to drop you in to cause you to flourish. Lord, put me in my place. And many of you are not flourishing because you're in the wrong environment. You have a good heart. You love people. You love God. But you're in the wrong environment. Let me say that again. You love God. You, you help people, but you're not flourishing because you're in the wrong environment. When it comes to, when it comes to a real estate, any of you, if you're in real estate glory, they tell you all the time, location, location, location. Somebody write that down. Location, location location. You can put the same house in different locations and the price changes. You can take a house, put that house in Middle Island, and then you take the same house and drop it in Dix Hills it's the same house, but the price is different because of the location. It's not the house, it's the location. It is called the law of environment. It is called the law of environment. What you know about Dix Hills, Isaiah? What you know about Dix Hills, Isaiah? <laughs> the law of environment. Oh, Amityville, that, that's where all my family is from, Albany Avenue. That's where my family's from, Albany Avenue, Albany Avenue. Yes, the Lawrences. All right. So the law of environment.
Yeah, Albany Avenue, the store right there was our family store, all of that. But they're still there. You're probably, if you've been there for any time period, you're familiar with the Lawrences. You're probably familiar with the Lawrences if you've been there. All right, so watch this. God spends five days creating the place, one day creating the man. On the seventh day, he rests, not because he's tired. He rests because he's finished. So God supernaturally puts him in the right environment so he can flourish. That's where Nisi's from. Amen. See that? We, we, we got Amityville on the line tonight. So God puts him, Lenore, in the right environment to cause him to flourish. Okay? It is very crucial. Okay? Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Let's go there. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Verse number 7, Genesis 2 and 7, Genesis 2 and 7, okay, Genesis 2 and 7, watch this, Larry, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Okay, verse eight. My, let, 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 let's work this. Let's work this. Come on, somebody say work it out. Let's work this. Let's work this. Let's work this real quick. Okay, good. Write this down. Genesis chapter 1, thank you, Genesis 1, 26, God, watch this, Genesis 1, 26, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, okay, Genesis 1, 26, watch this, Lenore, 1, 26, okay, good, thank you, Larry. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Okay, now Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. I have a question tonight, Glory. I have a question tonight, Cheryl. I have a question tonight, Isaiah. I have a question tonight, Tasha. I have a question tonight, Aisha, Sam, Evangelist Bryant. My question tonight is... Who's the man in chapter 1, and who's the man in chapter 2? Larry, who is the man in chapter 1, and who is the man in chapter 2? Cheryl, in chapter 1, verse 26, there's a man, and in chapter 2, Lenore, verse 7, there's another man. Who is this man? Who is the man in chapter 1, Tasha? Who is the man in chapter 2? Many times we read the Bible so quick, and we never stop, we never pause to ask the question. Okay, we just quote that scripture so quick. And God said this. And God said, let us make man. So who is the man in Genesis 1, 26 and 27? And who is this man in Genesis 7, uh, Genesis 2 and 7? Have you ever asked yourself that question? 
Have you ever asked yourself that question? Okay. Does anyone have an answer? Genesis 1, 26, and then Genesis 2 and 7. Okay. Come on, tap that screen if you're ready to break it down. Tap that screen if you're ready to break it down tonight. Okay, remember, you are a tripod being. Come on. You are a tripod being. Thank you, Cheryl. You are a tripod being. When I say that, you are made up of three. Somebody tell me what you're made up of. We are tripod beings. What are you made up of? Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me. Three parts. Three parts, Glory. What are those three parts? What are those three parts? Okay. Spirit. Spirit, okay. What are the other two parts? Soul, good. Spirit, flesh, and blood. Okay. Okay. So, good. Spirit, body, and soul. Okay, good. Okay, good. Those are the three parts. Okay, what is the order? Tell me the order of those three. Tell me the order of those three. Tell me the order of those three. You are three parts. You are three parts. What's the order? What's the order of the three? What comes first? What comes second? What comes last? You are three part, tri part being. Spirit, soul, and body. Tasha says spirit, soul, and body. Okay. All right. Soul, body, and spirit. Okay. Good. Anybody else? We have three parts body, soul, and spirit. Good, Isaiah. Good, Lenore. Good. Tasha. All right. The correct order is spirit, soul, and body. The correct order is spirit, soul, and body. Write that down. The correct order is spirit, soul, and body. You are a spirit. Write this down. You are a spirit. You don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. That you you are a spirit. You don't have a spirit, Isaiah. You are a spirit. There's a big difference, Aisha. There's a big difference, Cheryl. You don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. God bless you, Minister Bird. Bless you, mighty woman of God. Okay? So you don't have a spirit, Larry. You are a spirit. That's powerful. Where's my bomb squad at? That's powerful. Come on. You don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. Okay? So we thank you, Lenore. You are a tripod being, Minister Bird. You are spirit, soul, and body. Good. 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 Yeah. You are a spirit. Okay? Okay? I want you to see that. How do you know that you are a spirit? Because, watch this. God gives Adam, watch this, God gives Adam a body for his spirit. Lord have mercy. God gives Adam a body for his spirit, not a spirit for his body. Because the real you is spirit. And in order to live on this earth, you need a body. In order to live on this earth, you need a body. But you are a spirit. But in order to live here, you need a body. God gave you a body for your spirit. Lord have mercy. Not a spirit for your body. You are spirit first. You possess a soul. And you live in a body. Let me say that again. You are a spirit. You possess a soul. And you live in a body. That's a whole class I do probably uh, a three-day class on the spirit, soul, and body, okay? Spirit, soul, and body. 
You are a spirit. You possess a soul and you live in a body. Okay, I won't go too much into that, but that's a powerful class. You need to know this because most of you do not take care of those three compartments. Most of you do not take care of those three parts of you. Some of you are real good taking care of your body, but you don't take care of your spirit. Some of you are good taking care of your spirit, but you don't take care of your soul. Some of you are good taking care of your uh, spirit and body, but you don't take care of your soul. Some of you are good taking care of your spirit, but not your body. You've got to take care of all three parts. You are a spirit, you possess a soul, and you live in a body. Somebody write that down. Somebody write that down. Okay, good. Thank you, Minister Bird. Thank you. I caught it. Good, good. You are a spirit, you possess a soul, and you live in a body. Okay, you got that? You are not your body. You are not your body. You are a spirit, you possess a soul, and you live in a body. The body is the shell. The body is the shell that covers the real you. You are on the inside of that shell. But yet, you spend more time taking care of the outside. If you put as much time on the inside as you did the outside, you would be dangerous. You would be powerful. And the reason why we put a lot of effort on the outside, Lenore, because that's who we think we are. We think we are a body. We don't believe we are spirit. So we want to put the latest clothes on. We want to put the latest sneakers on. We want to put the latest pants on. We want to put on what's popular because we really think that we are the body. But the real you is on the inside. The hidden man, the hidden woman, that's the real you. You are a spirit, you possess a soul, and you live in the body. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Spirit being, you got it. Watch this. Okay? You understand that, right? You are a spirit. Okay? Watch this. I really don't want to get too much into this. But I want you... But pretty soon we'll be doing our classes. So when you sign up for them, you'll see. Okay. Write this down. There's five components to your soul. Did you know that? Did you know that there are five components to your soul? See, that's why I know most people, you, you, you don't do a good job taking care of yourself. Because either you are spirit, 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 or you are flesh, 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 flesh. Okay? Most people deal with the flesh or the spirit. Very few people deal with the soul. Very few people deal with the soul. And in your soul, Larry, there are five components to your soul, Isaiah. Five components to your soul, Lenore. Five components to your soul, Glory, Lenore, Shamia, Minister Bird. Five components, Larry. Five components, Nisi. Five. Tasha, five components to your soul. Five. If I had time, I would go over them, but tonight, I just want you to know that. You are a spirit. You possess a soul. And you live in the body, okay? 
There are people who are focused on physical exercise. Every day they get up, they do their jumping jacks, they do their walking, they do their aerobics, they do their yoga, and, and they, they, are, they emphasize physical exercise. But yet they are deficient in their soul. You know the greatest area, the greatest problem to you is in your soul. Okay? Your, your flesh is not your problem, and your spirit is not your problem. Your flesh is not the problem. Your body is not the problem. Your spirit is not the problem. It's your soul. Let me say that again. Your spirit is not the problem. Your body is not the problem. The issue is the soul. And if you can get the soul right, that's why spirit, soul, body. Spirit, soul, body. Spirit, soul, body. The soul is the middleman. The soul is the middleman. The soul is the one that brings the other two together. Okay? But if I had a chalkboard, I could really show you. If I had a chalkboard, I could show you where you could see it and not just hear me say it. But you, you, come on, tap that screen if you are receiving. I get it now. Good, Isaiah, good. It's the soul that is the key. How do we get the spirit right or how do we maintain and keep it together? Okay. You ever hear the scripture, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, good Larry, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Lift your right hand up. Lift your right hand up. And when you lift up your right hand, say right. When you lift up your right hand, say right. When you got your right hand lifted up, say right. Lift up your right hand. When you got it, say right. Thank you, Minister Bird. Come on. I want to show you something real quick. Lift up your right hand, right. Good, glory. Good. Good. Uh, good, Cheryl. Good. Lift up your right hand. Good, Lenore. Say right. Okay. Okay, Isaiah. Good. Good. All right, do me a favor. Put it back down. Put it back down. Put your right hand back down and just put up there, okay. When you put your right hand back down, say, okay. When you put your right hand back down, say, okay, good, good, okay, good. All right, now tell your right hand to pick itself back up. Tell your right hand to pick itself back up. Tell me what happens. Tell your right hand to pick itself up. Tell me what happened. Say, right hand, get up. Tell me what happened. Tell me what happened. Tell that right hand to get up. Tell me what happened. Tell that right hand. Nothing. Nothing. Tell the right hand to get up. What happened? Nothing. Why? Why? Why doesn't nothing happen? Why doesn't nothing happen? It didn't move, right? That, see, that's not your problem. You know why it moved the first time? It's the soul. It's the soul. The soul realm is the CEO. And when you learn, when you learn how to get your soul Submit it to your spirit. The body has to follow. Hear me. When you submit your soul to your spirit, the body has to follow. Lord, I wish I was in the classroom. I wish I was in the classroom. When you submit your soul to your spirit, your body has to follow. It has no choice but to follow. It won't do nothing on its own. 
It's your mind that controls your body. Lord, have mercy. All right. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, glory. You've got to submit your soul to your spirit. And the body, Minister Bird, will automatically follow. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee. Good morning, Kiana. Good evening. The Lord bless and keep you. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee. Why? Because when you learn how to submit your soul to your spirit, your body has to follow. That's the key right there. That's the key right there. No wonder the Bible says to renew your mind. Because you've got to submit your mind to your spirit. Write this down, please. In your spirit. Lord, I thank you. Boy, the, the Lord is dropping a lot of bombs on us tonight. Come on. In your spirit is God consciousness. Write that down. Write that down. In your spirit, it is God consciousness. Come on. Good. In your spirit, it is God consciousness. Good. In your soul, it is self-consciousness. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Come on. In your body, it is people consciousness. In your spirit, you are conscience of God. In your soul, you are conscience of yourself. And in your body, you are conscience of others. So your spirit connects you to God. Your soul connects you to you. And your body connects you to others. Lord, have mercy. My God, thank you, Holy Spirit. Your spirit connects you to God because God is a spirit. Your relationship with God is spirit and spirit. In your soul, you are self-consciousness. And in your body, you are aware of others. Hallelujah. Your body connects you to what's around you. The earth, the planet. Your spirit connects you, good Lenore, to God. Your relationship with God is spiritual. God is not your mother. God is not your father. God is not your boyfriend. God is not your girlfriend. God is a spirit. Your relationship with God is not physical. Your relationship with God is spiritual. Lord, have mercy. I know it sounds good. It sounds good to say all those other things, but your relationship with God is spiritual. That's why you have a hard time worshiping God. You have a hard time praising God because you're trying to do it in the natural. You're trying to do it in the physical. Your relationship with God is spiritual. Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. The word of God is spiritual. Praise is spiritual. Worship is spiritual. Your relationship with God, good Lenore, good Minister Bird, it is spiritual. All that stuff sounds good, that people say God is this and he's my husband. And he's, a, he's not your husband. He's not your wife. Because your, your relationship with him is not physical. 
Your relationship with him is spiritual. Good, good, excellent, excellent. Excellent. And that's why a lot of times you can't receive from God because you're trying to receive in the natural. The things of the spirit are spiritually discerned. You cannot discern spiritual things with a carnal mind. You cannot discern spiritual things with a carnal mind. And you don't receive from your head. You receive from your spirit. And many times God is saying something to us and we're trying to figure it out, Lenore, with our head. You don't figure it out with your head, Cheryl. You receive it with your spirit. Glory, you, when God speaks, glory, when God speaks, Larry, when God speaks, Minister Bird, you don't try to figure it out with your head. You receive it in your spirit. Yes. See, your head tries to rationalize it. Your head tries to figure it out. God's thoughts are too great for yours. You've got to receive it by the Spirit. If he said it, that's it. I don't have to figure it out. I don't have to figure out how he's going to do it. If he says I'm going to be debt free, I'm going to be debt free. If he says I'm going to get this house, I'm going to get this house. I don't have to try to figure it out. I don't have to connect all the dots. All I got to do is stay submitted to him and be directed by him. Lord have mercy. And the reason why, Isaiah, we miss God, because God is on FM and we are on AM. Did you hear that, Minister Bird? The reason why we miss God, God is on FM and we are on AM. We are on the wrong frequency. We are on the wrong frequency. Yes, thank you. I needed to hear this because I sure was sitting here trying to... Oh, you don't have to figure it out. God, God has a million ways to bring you out. God has a million ways to bring you out. And all we get caught up in is a job. God has a million ways to bring us out, and all we get caught up in is a job. So we think we got to work overtime. We think we got to work under time. We think we got to work all the time. See, because all we see is a job. That's the only way we see of coming out of something. Well, if I get more hours, if I do more things, and God says, I have a million ways to bring you out. I have a million ways to bring you up. You just have to listen to what I'm saying. And so we get worn out trying to work, 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 work. Don't you know you can only work so many hours? You can only work so many hours. You can only work so many hours. If you work 24 hours, you would be worn out. You wouldn't be no good. You wouldn't be no good for a couple of days. God says, I have one way. He told you, I said, give and it shall be given unto me. I said, sow into the kingdom. He tells you what to do. He tells you what to do, but we want to do it our way. Well, if I work more overtime and what you don't understand, the world system is the more you work, the more you get taxed. Did you know that? The world system is the more hours you work, the more you get taxed. So how are you really getting ahead if you are getting taxed more by working more? But in our mind, we think, man, if I put these extra hours in and the only thing that happens is you're worn out. You're worn out. You're wearing yourself out because you're going to get ahead because you're trying to figure it out because you are on AM and God is on FM. You're on the wrong frequency. You're on the wrong frequency. Watch this. Say, Pastor Brian, prove it. Let me, let me take you somewhere. Good evening, Sam. Man of God, blessings to you. Let, 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 let me take you somewhere. We're talking about the wrong frequency. Go with me to St. John chapter 3. 
Go with me to St. John chapter 3. Thank you, Isaiah. Thank you, Minister Bird. Go with me to St. John chapter 3. Because some of you are too intelligent. Some of you are too intelligent. Some of you are too educated. Some of you have too many degrees. See, some of you got too many degrees. You're too intelligent. See, you should thank God for your parents who didn't have a lot of education and they had wisdom. See, we don't want to listen to the older people who have wisdom. We got all of these degrees now and we think we know everything. Okay. John chapter three. Are you ready? Okay. Verse number one, John three and one. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Write that down. This man was a ruler of the Jews. Come on. He was a ruler. He was a very important person. He was a very educated person. Okay. A very influential person. Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews. Ruler of the Jews. Very influential, very intelligent, okay? Very prestigious person. The same came to Jesus by night. The same came to Jesus by night. You ready? Write this down, by night. Write that down, by night. Write that down, by night. I hope you caught it. Did anybody catch it? Did anybody catch it? Did anybody catch it? Watch this. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. Did you see that? Nick at night. Lord have mercy. You thought that was part of a TV show. Nick came at night. Nicodemus came at night because he was concerned about his other fellow Pharisees. He didn't want them to know that he was going to see Jesus. He didn't want them to know that, Lenore. But he realized something, Larry. Cheryl, he realized that Jesus had something he didn't have. He had education. He had prestige. He had position. He had notoriety. But Minister Bird, Nick, realized that Jesus had something he didn't have. My God. Watch this. Because... Every man must come to that conclusion that God has something that you need. Every man, glory, must come to that conclusion, Tasha, that everything you need is in him. Come on, somebody make that confession tonight. Everything I need is in him. Come on, you think it's in the world. You think. It's in education. You think it's in this or that, but everything you need, it's in him. Hallelujah. And some people, it takes 60 years. Some people, it takes 70 years. Some people, it takes 50 years. Some people, it take their whole lifetime. But there are some people, they never come to that conclusion. They never come to that conclusion. Because when they feel like their life is getting empty, they buy things. When they feel like their life is getting empty, they marry people. But everything you need is in the Lord. Hallelujah. Watch this. He comes to Jesus by night. He says, Rabbi, teacher, master, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Good God Almighty. For no man can do these miracles that, that, that thou does except God be with him. Come on. Lord have mercy. They were teachers of the law. 
They were teachers of the Lord, Larry, but yet they said, we teach, but this man teaches with power and demonstration. Come on. They were giving people information, but Jesus was giving them demonstration. We're living in a time where the church has to be about demonstration. We have made it about information and people are still bound. People are still on drugs. People are still messed up because we're trying to give them information, but they need a demonstration. They need a manifestation. They need revelation. Information does not change you. Revelation will transform your life. Demonstration will transform your life. Hallelujah. And when the church goes back, Minister Bird, when the church goes back to the buildings, Larry, when the church goes back to the building, Cheryl, all of those churches that continue to just offer information will become a dinosaur. Let me say that again. All of the churches, when they go back, that just offer information, they will become a dinosaur. We are moving into a time where there must be demonstration. Everything that you teach, there must be a demonstration. The word is not complete until it is demonstrated. The Bible was not written for information. The Bible was written for demonstration. There has to be a demonstration of what you are teaching, what you are saying. Jesus was powerful. His ministry was powerful, Lenore, not because he taught love. He demonstrated love. Not because he taught miracles. He demonstrated miracles. He demonstrated what he taught. And that's what's missing in the churches. There's a lot of talking. There's a lot of information, but there's no demonstration. There's a lot of information, but there's no power. There has to be power. Come on. Lord have mercy. You need to attend a church where there's power. Power to destroy yokes. Power to lift burdens. I'm not going to a church, to a country club. I need to go to a place where there is power. My God, if my mind is not right, it can get right. If I, if I come in depressed, I can leave free. If I come in sick, I can leave well. I need to be in an environment where there is power. Lord, I thank you. Good God Almighty. All right, let me calm down. I'm about to go into another. Lord, have mercy. Let me finish this. Come on, if you're receiving tonight, tap that screen. My God, you guys must be pulling tonight. You must be pulling on the anointing because God is releasing. God is releasing and releasing and releasing tonight. You must be pulling on that anointing tonight. My God, hallelujah. Watch this. Crystal, watch this, Lenore, Isaiah, Larry, Kiana, Kadia, Sam. Watch this, Aisha, Minister Bird. Watch this, people of God. He said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God because you can't do what you do except God be with you. Verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, watch this. Watch this, Larry. He is telling Jesus we know. Write that down, please. Lord, have mercy. We know, Minister Bird. He said, we know, not just me, but all of my comrades, all of my associates. We know you are the real deal. That's why I'm coming at night. I can't let them know. And I can't let others know that I'm coming to you. Because if we admit publicly 
you are the real deal, then we also have to admit that we are not. Did you catch that? They knew if they admitted that Jesus was the real deal, they also had to admit they wasn't. If they admitted that Jesus had the power, they had to admit they didn't have it. My God. And some people are willing to stay where they are, even though they know that where they are, there's no power. I don't care if your mother went to the church. I don't care if your grandmother went to the church. I don't care if your family put the pane glass in the window. I don't care if you got a seat in the church. If there's no power, you don't need to be in there. You need to sit under someone who is anointed by God, hallelujah, who is led by God. All right. Notice what Jesus said. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Nicodemus said unto him, write this down, please. Write that down. Good. Okay, watch this, Minister Bird. Jesus said, you must be born again. Watch this, Lenore. Jesus tells this man, you must be born again. Now, Larry, this educated man says to Jesus, how can a man be born when he is old? Did you see that, Isaiah? He, he says, wait a minute. Jesus, you're saying that we must be born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Did you see that, Minister Bird? Did you see that, Aisha, Tasha? Did you see that? Cheryl, Jesus is on FM, and Nicodemus is on AM. Lenore, Nicodemus is on the wrong frequency. Jesus is talking spiritual, and Nicodemus is talking physical. Did you see that, Larry? Many times we are on the wrong frequency, Isaiah. Jesus was talking spiritual. And Nicodemus was talking physical. Jesus said, you must be born again. And Nicodemus, Cheryl, thought he was talking about a man being born at an old age. See, you can be so smart, but yet so far off. You can be so intelligent and still not know. You can be ever learning but never come into the truth because you are on the wrong frequency. You are a spirit. God is a spirit. And when God deals with you, he deals with you in the spirit. He deals with you in the spirit. All right, let me, let, let's, let's, let's go back. Let me close this out now. Let me close this out. What time is it? I don't have my watch in front of me. What time is it? If you're being blessed tonight, come on, tap that screen. If you're being blessed tonight, tap that screen. Good, good, Larry. Yeah, Jesus talking spiritual. Nick, Nick is good. Hey, okay, I'm perfect. I'm right on time. I'm right on time. Good. I'm right on time. Good. Let me close out with this. Let me close out with this. Let me close out with this. Let I'm going to do this for you. Nobody asked me for it, but I'm going to do it. 
Let me give you, I'm going to give you the five components to your soul. How about that? You want me to wait till next week or you want me to give them to you tonight? The five components to your soul. I thought somebody would ask me for it. I would have gave it to you if you would have asked me. I thought somebody was going to say, what are the five components, Pastor? Tonight. Okay, good. Let's go. Let's go. I see that, Cheryl. I see that, Lenore. Number one, your mind. Number one, your mind. Thank you, Lenore. Number two, your will. Number three, your emotions. Number four, your intellect. You got it? And number five, your imagination. Number five, your imagination. Okay. Spirit, you are a spirit. You possess a soul and you live in a body. That five components, Isaiah, I do a teaching on that for a week. I do a teaching on that for a week, dealing with the five components to your soul. I take each one and I break it down. Okay. Okay. You are a spirit, Cheryl. You possess a soul and you live in a body. What are the five components? Your mind. How you think. Your will. What you do. Your emotions. How you feel. Your intellect. Your makeup. Your imagination. The ability to pre-play your future. Good God Almighty. Let me let me not go there, because I'll stay there. I'm not going to go there. I just want to give you the five. I just want to give you the five. Thank you, Minister Bird. Your mind, will, emotions, intellect, and imagination. Your mind, what you think. Your will, what you do. Your emotions, how you feel. Your intellect, your makeup, and your imagination, your ability to pre-play your future. God has given you the ability to pre-play your future, and you don't even know it. Glory. God has given, you can be, you can be in the middle of Alaska in the winter, and with your imagination, you can leave Alaska and go to Florida. Your imagination is so powerful, Isaiah. You can leave where you are and go somewhere else. Good God Almighty. All right. If you ever learn who you are, it would be all over. If you learn who you are, it would be all over. If you learn how to get your spirit, soul, and body in alignment, if you learn how to get your spirit, soul, and body in alignment, it's all over. The reason why your life is like it is because you're out of alignment. You're out of alignment. A water hose. Watch this. You, do you see this wire? You see this wire? You see this wire? You see this wire? Okay. The wire is like a water hose. The wire is like a water hose. The wire, Minister Bird, is like a water hose, Glory. The wire is like a water hose, okay? And as long as the water hose is like this, Lenore, the water does not flow. The water cannot flow. But once you straighten out the hose, it's an alignment. Once you bring your life into alignment, your life will begin to flow. 
Your life will begin to flow. You are destined to be wealthy. You are destined to be great. It's in you. You just have to bring your spirit, your soul, and your body into alignment. You've got to do it. And your body controls you. Your body controls you. And you've got to stop your flesh from controlling everything. See? Instead of your your spirit being in control and your body following, it's your flesh in control and your spirit following. Lord have mercy. Boy, if we had a little bit more time, but I don't have it tonight. My God, if you were blessed tonight, come on, tap that screen. If you were blessed tonight, tap that screen. Hallelujah. Well, see, what we're going to talk about that. See, we're going to talk about that because the Lord has showed us how to do it. See, the Lord has showed us in his word how to bring everything into alignment. The Lord has showed us in his word how to bring everything into alignment. Okay, You can't pray. He already showed you. There are keys that he showed you. And when you, when you operate the keys, uh-oh, awesome, to God be the glory. I just got a blessing. I just got a blessing. Thank you, Father. All right, if you were blessed tonight, I want you to put on their bless. This is one of the classes I teach. You guys have been getting a lot of uh, bonus. This is a class that I teach. You guys have been getting a lot of bonus. The leadership class, the last two days and tonight. Matter of fact, I think uh, the night services, I'm going to start uh, going to something like this versus I want to go to and more empowerment. I want to go to more empowerment. What Were you really blessed tonight by? Were you blessed tonight by, by these teachings? Did this help anybody? Did this help anybody tonight? Did this help anybody tonight? Did this help anybody tonight? Okay, good. Thank you, Isaiah. I done found... We may be related, Isaiah. We may be related, Isaiah. The spirit being was blessed tonight. Awesome. 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 All right. Can you see this? Let me see. Can you see this? Can you see that? Can you see that? What does that say? What does that say? Somebody tell me what that says. Somebody tell me what that says. There you go. There you go. See? That's the only thing that matters. Black lives matter. All lives matter. Blue lives matter. Money matters. Possession matters. All that stuff matters. But at the end, at the end of the day, The only thing that matters is salvation. Because when you stand before God, when you stand before God, the only thing he's going to ask you, did you know me? Did you know me? Did you accept my son? Did you accept my son? That's the only thing that matters. Lord have mercy. You can be a public success and a private failure. You can be a public success and a private failure. You could be successful. Everybody know you in the world. But when you stand before God, God says, depart from me. I know you not. I don't want to be known by man and not known by God. Hallelujah. All right. Hey, don't don't start, Minister Bird. All right. 
this is what I want you to do tonight. If you were blessed, if you were blessed, I want you, I want you to sow tonight. If you were blessed, I want to give you an opportunity to sow. If you were blessed, if you were blessed, I want to give you an opportunity tonight. Go to, let me put, somebody put up the website uh, for me. Somebody put up the website for me. There's the cash app. There's the website. I want you to sow. And we want to thank God for all of our first time guests. We want to thank God for all of our first time guests. All of our first time guests, we want to thank you for joining us tonight. We are on every day, Monday through Friday at 7 o'clock on Periscope. Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock on Periscope. Sunday morning at 9, Sunday evening at 6. We are on uh, Facebook and Periscope, okay? Are those shirts available, Sam? Are those shirts yet available? I told Sam, Father, we thank you for Minister Bird sowing tonight. We thank you for Minister Bird sowing tonight. We speak increase, abundance, and favor in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the awesome teaching and learning. Awesome. Those shirts are available. I shared it with uh, Sam the other day. Somebody gave me a great idea. They said, Pastor, look up this idea. They said, wouldn't this be a good shirt? Salvation matters. I said, you got that right. I told Sam and he already designed it. Father, we thank you for glory sowing tonight. We speak increase, abundance, and favor into her life right now. We thank you. May your word be manifested in her life in Jesus' name. All right. All right. Anyone need any prayer before we go? Any prayer requests tonight? Any prayer requests tonight? Any prayer requests tonight? Any testimonies? I would love to hear a testimony. Do we have any testimonies on here tonight? Any testimonies? Any prayer requests tonight? Any testimonies or prayer requests tonight? Yes. Yes. What do you have a testimony? Started new job soon. Awesome. Good, Isaiah. You have a testimony? Can we pray for my friend's father? Father, we lift up Sam's friend's father in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you for whatever's going on. We send the word of healing restoration, deliverance, in Jesus' name, amen. My friend was healed from her kidney stone, amen. Father, we thank you for Barbara Bird's friend being healed from the kidney stone. And we thank you for Isaiah's new job starting soon. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else have a testimony? Anyone else have a prayer request? Anyone else have a testimony or a prayer request? Hallelujah. And Father, we want to pray for all of those who support and view this broadcast. There are some people that we're not even aware of that come on here. and But we pray for everyone on here tonight. Whatever they stand in need of, you are the God who can meet every need. Every need, every person that's on here, you are the God who can meet us right where we are. So we thank you. Let your peace overshadow each person. We thank you that every yoke is destroyed, every burden is lifted. Thank you, Brother Larry. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Awesome. All right. We love you all. Have a productive night. Have a fruitful night. Most of all, when you're ready, say ready. When you're ready, say ready. I want to pray over you tonight before we leave. Let me pray the benediction prayer before we leave. When you're ready, say ready so I can pray over you and your family. Good. I see that, Isaiah. I see it, Glory. I see it. Good. Good, Minister Bird. Good, Sam. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. I see that, Lenore. And be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance 
upon you and give you shalom. And I pray tonight that God give you sweet sleep according to Proverbs 3 and 24, Cheryl, that you have sweet sleep tonight. Come on, somebody receive that sweet sleep tonight according to Proverbs 3 and 24. When you lie down, don't be afraid for your sleep shall be sweet. Hallelujah. I receive it. You will not toss and turn. You will not be up and down. You will not be uh, tormented at night with bad dreams. God promises you sweet sleep. Hallelujah. Awesome. Good, Minister Berg. Good. For you and your kids. Good, Glory. Yes, yes, yes. All right. I got to go. Well, thank you so much. I don't take it lightly that you came on tonight. Uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you for your support. I need to go. I receive it. You will not. I receive it. Good. Sweet sleep. Yes. Every night. Sweet sleep. Hallelujah. Visions and dreams. I pray for someone that God give you visions and dreams. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I tell you what I just heard? Can I tell you what I just heard? My God. Can I tell you what I just heard? I don't know who this is for. Can I tell you what I just heard? I don't know who this is for. But before I was about to close, this is what I heard. The Lord said, I'm about to pour because of the poor. God said, I'm about to pour because of the poor. In other words, some of you deal with the poor. Some of you help the poor. Some of you give to the poor. And God says, because you have been given to the poor, I'm going to pour on you. I'm going to pour out blessings on you. Because when you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord. And God says, because people haven't seen what you've been doing You've been doing it in secret and you've been helping people who are poor. And God says, because you have helped the poor, I'm going to pour blessings on you. I will repay those who take up the cause of the poor. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Boy, there are so many secrets. There are so many secrets in the word. There are so many keys in the word that if you just follow those keys, you will be prosperous. You're doing it the hard way. You're trying to do it on your own. You're doing it the hard way. You're trying to do it like the world. Just follow the keys God gave you. He told you to give to the kingdom. He told you to give to the poor. He told you what to do. He told you what to do. But you're trying to follow everybody else. You're trying to follow people's eight steps to success. You're trying to follow people on TV, what they're doing. You need to follow the Holy Spirit. Follow the Holy Spirit. All right, meet me in the morning. The Lord say the same. We'll continue our lesson on leadership. Are you ready? Are you ready for our lessons on leadership in the morning? We're going to talk some more about leadership in the morning. Okay. So meet me in the morning. Lord, say the same, 7 o'clock. God bless you all. Shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. There is nothing missing. There is nothing broken. There is nothing lacking. Those of you who are working in the morning, you go to Periscope, you can catch the replay. Thank God for replay. Thank God for replay. You can go back at your leisure and watch it. Okay, so if you've been missing anything, don't feel like you missed it because it will stay up there and you can watch it at your leisure. All right. Good night. God bless each one of you.